Hey, welcome back. This is Jake, and this lesson is all about the Lydian scale. Really, what I want to teach you guys is how to use the scale, because uh, if you're anything like me, you learned it and didn't know anything what to do with it. I was like that with almost all of the modes of the major scales. Like, I learned them, and I thought, okay, well, what's the point? Well, that's what I'm going to teach you, is what is the point? And um, there's a lot of ways we can describe this, and I'm going to try and summarize it for you as easily as possible. Uh, if you're just interested in hearing what this sounds like first, though, skip to the end of the video. I'm going to do some improv with uh, the Lydian key, and you can actually hear what it sounds like um, before you decide to invest all this time into learning what Lydian is all about, okay? So even if you don't have a music theory background, you should be able to follow this video, and I think it'll be a really good place to start, actually, with your music theory, because I'm not going to talk about modes. I'm going to talk about Lydian, and we're going to treat it like its own scale. We're not. We're going to forget about all the other scales, and we're going to just treat like this like its own thing, okay? So to get started, here's the deal. To build a Lydian scale, you need to start on a root, all right? And in today, I will pick G. That'll be uh, the third fret on my low string. And once I've found a root, all I have to do is start traveling whole steps. Okay, a whole step is just a distance of two frets, or on a keyboard, it's a distance of two keys, okay? So if I travel a whole step, it'll take me to A. Another whole step will take me to B. Another whole step will take me to C sharp. And then I have to take a half step. That'll take me to D. Then another whole step to E, another whole step to F sharp, and a half step will take me back to G. So you can see, to build a Lydian scale, all you have to do is start on a root, and then travel three whole steps, one half step, two whole steps, and one half step. And that'll get you an entire Lydian scale all the way through. Now, this is a pretty silly way to play our guitar. We don't want to really want to be playing up and down like this. We want to be playing our guitar like this. So the shape I'm going to show you to play Lydian looks like this. And you'll see it's set up three notes per string. Also, you'll see I've gone way past one octave. Only one octave this scale ends, ends right here. But I can keep going into another octave right there. And then I kind of run out of space here, so I stop. Instead of moving like this, I'm just going to stop there and work my way back down the scale shape. So that's just one way to play it. Now, there it was in G, but the nice thing about a scale shape um, like this is it's movable. So if I wanted to play A Lydian, all I'd have to do is just move my finger, start on the fifth fret, A. Now I'm playing A Lydian. All right. If I want to play D Lydian, I'll just start here on D. Up. Oh. All right. So now I'm in D Lydian using the exact same shape. All right. So what is, uh, how do we start using this? I'm going to talk to you about the most important concept when it comes to working with scales and when it comes to working with modes. And that concept, and it really applies with Lydian more than the other ones. The concept is to focus on your root. All right? Today, my root was G. All right? So unless I focus on G, you're really not going to get the Lydian feel out of this. So check it out. Here's a bunch of notes from G Lydian. All right? Okay? And I'm going to just kind of play those randomly in random order. Right? There's not a really strong feel here of what's going on. But as soon as I play a G underneath all this and start focusing on my root... You hear that sound? That Lydian... Uh, that tonality is starting to develop. And Lydian tonality is very spacey, disconnected, kind of floaty, uh, kind of dreamy, right? But the only reason we're getting that effect is because I'm giving you the root underneath it. Without that root, it's very hard to tell what's actually going on here. Um, you know, that doesn't really sound that dreamy, but if I do it all with a G underneath it. All right, so I'm just kind of noodling around there, but you're starting to hear the Lydian tonality kind of coming out of that. Um, another way to do this, at, you know, to if you want to start writing with this and focusing on the root, is to just think about making a riff. All right, so let's say I wanted to just use the notes of G Lydian. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the root, that's G. I'm going to keep palm unit. And then maybe I start going up the scale. And then back down. All right, so I've got this cool little... And I'm going to keep kind of playing around with that, going up then back to my root. Right now you hear this. 
that mm-hmm. that Lydian tonality kind of feels like the Jetsons, right? I mean, I think they use it in the Jetsons. Meet George Jetson. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, it's got like a sci-fi kind of feel to it, very progressive rock kind of feel to it. And that's just literally taking some of the notes. I mean, I, I didn't do any composition. There. There's no bass line. There's no chord progression in the background. So even at a very uh, limited level, you can see just by focusing on the root of any Lydian scale and playing the other notes around it, you're going to start getting a Lydian tonality. However, how do you really kind of squeeze all the juice out of Lydian? Well, here's my suggestion for something like that. I think the real key to the Lydian power and the Lydian feel occurs in the ma- the root, the third note of the scale, the fourth note of the scale, which is a tritone, and I did an entire video on tritones. You should check that out because that distance right there of my root to my tritone is kind of the heart of the matter here. All right, we've got that ugly tritone, but we also have this nice major third note. All right, and then the fifth as well. So those four notes, the root, the third, the fourth, and the fifth, I think are the most important notes in the Lydian scale. And just by playing those notes, I can get some really wonderful sounding Lydian things going on. All right. So uh, there's a little shape here that I'm actually showing you that just kind of goes through um, that idea of doing your root, third, fourth, fifth, root, third, fourth, fifth. You can move it up again to another string, so you'd have to jump up two frets. But you can hear how nice of a sound that is. It's just the good parts of the Lydian scale. Instead of doing the entire scale, um, just kind of extracting some of the good parts for these little mini scale shapes is very helpful. Um, Also, you could do that... um, in uh, this little shape as well, this is one I really like to use as a lead guitar player. Here's my root with my middle finger, that's the, the G. And if I want that root, third, fourth, and fifth, that's the root, third, tritone, and fifth, um, then I can use this little shape as well. And I, I love that because you can bend this note here. Also, you can follow it up with your first finger to play the shape again in the next octave. And again, in the next octave, if you want to. So all that is is just your root, your third, your fourth, and your fifth. And as at the improvised thing at the end, I'm going to improvise over some Lydian stuff. You're going to see me use that move a lot because it's wonderful. It sounds great. So my suggestion to sound Lydian is to really focus on those notes, the root, the third, um, the sharp four, and the five right there. Those to me are the heart of Lydian, okay? So isolating those when you're working with a scale, try and identify it. No, hey, this is the note I kind of want to be playing. Because without that tritone, it's not going to really sound Lydian. If I just hang out on the fifth and the sixth all day, I'm not really getting that Lydian feel. That tritone is so important there. Now, if I want to start writing a Lydian chord progression, it's going to get a little bit more difficult. And you are going to need to know a little bit of theory here, but I'll walk you through it. It's pretty simple. Uh, In the key of G, you can see these are all the notes in in the G Lydian scale. And to figure out the first chord I'm allowed to play, here's all I have to do. I'll start on the first note, and then I'll skip a note, all right? That takes me to B, and then I'll skip another note, and that takes me to D. So if I play G, B, and D together, I get this. That's a G chord. And that's the first chord in G Lydian. All right, I'm allowed to play this. Uh, The second chord I'm allowed to play, start on the second note, which is A, all right? You'd have an A, a C sharp, and an E, and if you play those notes together, you get an A major. So the two chord would be A major. I can do this with every note. Start on the three note, the third note, and you'd get a B minor chord, all right? The fourth note, you get a C sharp half diminished chord. So really, all I need you to know is that the one chord is really important. These are the chords I would recommend. Don't really play around with, you know, the six or the five or anything like that. Try to play with the one chord and the two chord and then the seven chord. I think those are really your best bets if you want to compose in Lydian. Now, definitely, you know, explore and definitely be creative and try out things that I haven't mentioned, but if you want to just kind of start sounding good right away, I really recommend stay on your one chord a long time and then maybe bring in that two chord just for a little bit and then just try to come back to that one chord as soon as possible. Because if you wander too far from your one chord, if you wander too far from that G, then it's going to start sounding a little weird. It's not going to sound this like this floaty Lydian feel anymore. Watch what happens, for example, if all of a sudden I play a D major chord, which is in the key. Listen to what happens. Right? That all of a sudden feels like I've reset into the key of D major. And that's, you know, the problem with Lydian is it's unstable. It wants to resolve. So we're trying to prevent that. We're trying to keep it from resolving. And the way, only way we can do that is to really stay on the one and avoid uh, the five chord. That would be my best advice is try to stay away from the five chord completely. All right. And with that, you'll get these nice Lydian chord progressions.
So before I just show you what this sounds like by taking a Lydian chord progression and playing some notes of this three notes per string shape on top of it, um, I do want to talk briefly about the fact that this is a mode of the major scale. I haven't really talked about modes, and you don't have to think about these things as modes. I actually think it's very helpful to, t to pretend like this is the only scale in the world. Pret forget about major, forget about minor, forget about everything else, and just look at this as its own independent scale and try and figure out, okay, what can I do with it? What melodies can I write with this? What does it sound like? What chords do I like? What chords don't I like? Because if you treat it like its own thing, then you'll really kind of get to know it and identify it when you hear it as well. Um, then, later on, try to understand that, hey, this is the exact same thing as a major scale, just starting on the fourth note. And really, that's what this is. If you think about all these notes that we played here in G Lydian, they are identical to the notes of the D major scale. So there's really no difference between the D major scale and the G Lydian scale other than what did I focus on? What did I really spend my time coming back to, all right? And in G Lydian, you can see I ended up focusing on this note, whereas in D major, I ended up focusing on that note. And that, to me, is the heart of modal, uh, of working with modes. And that really eluded me for a long time. I just didn't understand what's the difference between D major and G Lydian. They're the same notes. And once I realized, hey, if you focus on a different area of this collection of notes, you're going to get a completely different feel, then that's when modes started really clicking with me. But um, I think it's important to treat these things all as their own scale, and then later on maybe evaluate how they fit in to uh, the major scale and how they're related. Um, so you kind of want to look at it both ways. It is a mode, yes, but it's also its own independent scale, and I want you to think of it as that way as well. So I hope you enjoy this little improv here at the end. You're going to see me uh, using that three notes per string shape, but you'll also see me branch off into uh, some of those little tiny shapes I showed you earlier with the, with the notes of the root, the third, the sharp four, which is the tritone, and the fifth. I'll be doing a lot of that. And uh, this should be pretty uh, uh, demonstrative of what Lydian normally sounds like. It's very good for spacey, um, progressive, um, disconnected feeling uh, in music. And I don't know. I'm just a big fan of that stuff. So hopefully you are too. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.